So now, with the aid of the Shader Lab page called Alpha Testing, we will learn about Alpha Testing. So by default, Alpha Testing is off, and the alternative is to render the pixels of your mesh based on a certain comparison uh, with the alpha values. So you can learn about what those comparisons are, but a common one to use is greater than or equal to. So what we will do is utilize a shader with that. So we'll put in alpha test greater than or equal to a cutoff. So before we do that, let's look at what our alpha channel actually looks like. So we have a white and then various grayscale values, a 75, 50, and 25% gray. And then we also have a primary channel. From, this is why we bound the vertex color alpha before. So that's just a white to black gradient. So what we're going to do is put a multiplication of the alpha channel of the texture with the four blocks and this gradient together into the alpha channel. And you'll see why that should be a good illustration. Uh, what we will do is combine the texture alpha uh, times the primary alpha which is going to show us in the RGB channels what the alpha channel looks like. So the alpha channel, although that's not actually rendered um, in RGB on screen, you don't see that, it actually looks just like this to the computer. So now we're going to, as I said, utilize this, this test. Um, so cutoff is going to be a value we get in through range. So we call that alpha cutoff and range between 0 and 1 because this is black, this is white in your alpha channel. So let's go ahead and see what that slider does. So we're going to, going to take alpha cutoff, start off at zero. So that means that anything that is greater than or equal to zero in the alpha channel will be rendered, which of course is everything. Everything is black or greater. And then we'll start moving this to the right. And we're seeing the very darkest values here, mixture of the dark grays and a dark uh, gradient near the bottom, a darker area of the gradient. Um, we're seeing all those values get cut off, and so this mesh is not actually rendering there, or rather the pixels are not being written to the screen. So as we drag further and further up, we'll eventually lose all of our mesh when the slider's all the way up to one. Um, okay, so we see this one line because that's greater than or equal to. So if we change greater equal to just greater, then it would have to be greater than one, and now we no longer see anything. So you'll have to figure out what is actually useful for you in your own uh, renders. Go ahead and move that slider back down. And we'll see what the benefit of this is because we're not, again, blending anything. It's just a, this pixel gets rendered or this pixel doesn't get rendered sort of thing. So we'll turn this mesh, mesh renderer off for now. We'll turn the other mesh renderer on. So there's the alpha channel of that multiplied by the gradient and start moving that slider. So black, we have black pixels here, and as soon as we move the slider to the right, then that gets cut off. We're seeing through the mesh now because all that black stuff is not allowed to render. And then as we move to the right, we're losing more and more pixels to the, till we get to the top. So let's alter the shader to see what we actually would uh, want to see. We're not gonna be looking at the alpha values in the RGB anymore. We'll just be looking at the color of the texture so now we can move the slider and see everything go go away um, in a way that could be could be useful to us because we know that we don't want to render those black values this is more of just an illustration to see how it works but we definitely don't want to see that black so let's go ahead and say we'll make it greater so now even with the slider at zero then those pixels don't render. So we're going to render the four pixels again on screen and we'll change that alpha value and we'll see that we can see through the bottom here. There's no blending it once again. Um, it's just a cutout and everything looks good from front to back. Now we're going to look at the other side and again because of no blending everything's rendering in the right order. We're still per we're right into the depth buffer, we're performing depth te tests and everything's actually opaque, so it works out perfectly. The rendering order doesn't matter. The order of the mesh is rendering doesn't matter at all. It's all just based on uh, writing to the screen by, based on that alpha value. So can be 
quite useful in many cases. Now, this is a tutorial series specifically about iOS, so I need to mention to you that although you'll see Unity shaders that don't even use a tag, uh, a queue tag, to change the rendering queue, which means they're leaving these alpha test shaders in geometry, you do not want to do that on the iPhone. And that's because the iPhone has something that is called tile-based deferred rendering. And that means that these pixels, um, we were talking about the depth buffer before, and how pixels make it, might get written to, this, written to the uh, color buffer and then overwritten. Um, this won't happen on the iPhone. Those pixels never actually get written to anything. They all get kind of mixed together, jumbled together in a way that I don't fully understand myself. But I know that they don't get written to the screen until everything has been collected. So if you're doing alpha testing, that sort of breaks, breaks what the hardware is made for. So the way to get a better speed increase or a speed increase out of alpha testing shaders is, one, don't use them at all because the hardware is not optimized for it. But if you need to use them, and I found a few cases, especially like fences and things where it's quite useful, um, what you need to do is move that out of the geometry queue. And Apple recommends that you do alpha testing after your, your opaque geometry. It is still opaque, but it's not the same thing as all of your non-alpha tested opaque uh, geometry. It doesn't have the same optimizations. So put it after geometry, but before your transparent uh, objects, or your blended objects, so you probably wouldn't want this in the transparent queue. You might do, say, transparent minus 100 or 500 or whatever. Geometry, here's right in the middle of geometry and transparent. So it doesn't have any visible effect on screen whatsoever because, again, it's not blending anything, so you don't need to worry about the order of things here. Um, so as long as this isn't being rendered after your transparent objects, then uh, you don't have any, any real uh, change to worry about but this does help you, it should help you get higher frame rates in the case that you'd need to use an alpha testing shader.